Mississippi. Next at five, tropical depression 16 forms off the Florida coast. Brian Norcross here in Weather Control, and this system could have a significant impact on our state. Uh, I'll have the late advisory coming up here in just a moment. At long last, the water is being pumped out of New Orleans. I'm Brian Andrews, live in Kenner, Louisiana, where, yes, the water is being pumped out and the body count continues. We'll have the very latest from the disaster zone coming up. And tonight, some hurricane victims are defying orders to leave town. We'll tell you why. CBS 4 Live team coverage from New Orleans straight ahead. South Florida Coast Guard officers back home and talking about the amazing rooftop rescues they made. A convoy of South Florida support rolls into the hardest hit areas, and CBS 4 is right there. And, of course, you can show your support by calling our neighbor's phone bank. We'll have the phone number for you. Hello, South Florida. So good to be back with you. I'm Maggie Rodriguez. <laughs> I'm Rob Hanrahan. CBS 4 News at 5 starts right now. Now, live, this is CBS 4 News First at 5. Your weather station tracking Tropical Depression 16 off the Florida coast. TD-16 has a portion of the central Florida coast under a tropical storm warning tonight. The new advisory and forecast for 16 is just in. Let's get right to CBS4 meteorologist Brian Norcross, live in weather control. Brian? All right, Rob and Maggie, first of all, we do not, we do not expect tropical depression 16 or potentially tropical storm Ophelia to have any significant effect on us here in South Florida. Now, our friends in the northern Bahamas are under a tropical storm warning as well. Give you those details in just a moment. Now, here is the system with the radar on top of the satellite. Now the center of circulation is down here, right about uh, Grand Bahama Island, right? Let me put a dot on it, right in that area, right in there. It's a big, broad center, but you see that the bad weather is up here to the north. It's a very disorganized system, and as it moves, uh, thinking is going to drift to the north, it's uh, going to consolidate this weather, and so it may very well get stronger. So points north appear to be the most threatened. Here we can see, now remember, Remember, the center is right up in here. Now we can see the circulation around it. If you look at these low clouds down here, see them circulating in like this. But the weather with this thing is rotating up and like that. So Palm Beach County and north is going to feel the weather from this. We're going to have just uh, some fringe effects. Now here are the numbers as of the new advisory, 26.7 and 78.5. 30 mile an hour winds puts it right about Grand Bahama Island or 175 miles southeast of Cape Canaveral. Slowly spreading up the coast. Now the problem is if it stays offshore, the water is warm here, and the thinking is this could become quite a strong tropical storm up here for the northern part of the state. And so those tropical storm warnings go up to Titusville now, but they will no doubt have to be extended north if that's the way the storm goes. And there you see the warnings for the northern islands of the Bahamas. Now we have a hurricane and another tropical storm out there. We'll talk about that and more on TD16 in a few minutes. Now, progress for a city underwater, but some residents stand their ground. I got to stay here. That's all I got. As the president makes a promise. So I'm going to find out uh, over time what went right and what went wrong. Tonight, New Orleans finally begins drying out. So much well, the New Orleans mayor says the receding water is a ray of light. But he also says he's bracing for the horror ahead, perhaps thousands of bodies. CBS4 has the only South Florida TV reporters in the New Orleans area. Our team coverage tonight begins with Brian Andrews, live in Kenner. Brian. Maggie, welcome back. And here from Kenner tonight, we can tell you we've just been to the airport, and we are so proud to be Americans because the great American airlift continues. Helicopter out of helicopter still plucking people out of those floodwaters in downtown New Orleans. And the real concern at this hour is what's in the floodwaters. We have confirmed that there is E. coli bacteria there. There's also concerns that there are going to be mosquitoes hatching out of the floodwaters, spreading West Nile virus and other potential killers. The pumps are working and the floodwaters receding, but recovery efforts are painfully slow. New Orleans mayor says it'll take more than three weeks to pump out all of the water, then another month to clean up storm debris. He says perhaps another 90 days will be necessary to restore power and other services. And what the work crews will find will be gruesome. I think we're going to see a second wave of despair. I think this nation is going to be shocked one more time when we start pulling all these bodies out of these homes. Some emergency management experts fear the death toll may reach 10,000, and that's roughly the same number of people the military believes are left in New Orleans as rescue efforts enter week number two. Here at New Orleans International Airport, the military helicopters are coming and going, and they are still delivering people here to safety. 
after plucking them out of the floodwaters downtown. I had to get out of there. Were you up on the roof waving them down, or what happened? No, I went in the middle of the street when I see them waving them down. It was time to go. Meantime, firefighters are putting the floodwaters to use and dousing fires that continue to break out in the stricken city. Earlier today, this home in the historic Garden District fell to the flames. As martial law continues, the National Guard continues to arrest looters and other troublemakers. They're being housed at a train depot turned into a makeshift jail. The president says he'll lead an investigation into why it took so long for the federal government to get help into New Orleans after the storm. And Mr. Bush vows to cut the red tape that many claim has hobbled the relief efforts. Of course, bureaucracy is not going to stand in the way of getting the job done for the people. In response uh, to calls for the firing of FEMA's director, the president says now is not the time to point the finger of blame. He's sending Vice President Cheney to the area Thursday and says the focus is still rescuing people and providing storm relief. So there are thousands of people who try to get their lives in order, and a lot of the big businesses that we deal with every day are very understanding about what we've been through. For example, Cox Cable, which provides cable to all of New Orleans, they've told all the customers, don't worry about paying the bill till next year. Same story goes along with people who have their mortgages with Chase Manhattan. They're being told that their payments are now being deferred through December. And the state of Louisiana this morning did something very unique. They have suspended the collection across the board of state sales tax and they're telling people that if they bought storm supplies and they still have receipts that there will eventually be forms they can fill out to have that sales tax refunded. Reporting live from Kenner, I'm Brian Andrews, CBS 4 News. And Brian, despite the warnings, some New Orleans residents are refusing to leave their homes and you might be surprised to hear why. CBS 4's Mike Kirsch is in New Orleans tonight. He'll bring us the story all new and only on 4, live at 6 o'clock. Well, these will be some of the lasting images from out. Katrina's aftermath, these rooftop rescues by the thousands. A group of South Florida Coast Guard officers is home tonight talking about how their mission was the answer to so many people's prayers. CBS 4's Lori Stein reports from Opelaka. We've all seen video of these helicopters in action and that video has been amazing, but you really have no idea of what it's like to rescue lives, to be inside one of these helicopters until you sit down and you talk to the pilots, the swimmers, and the hoisters who rescue people. We just couldn't resist getting a Top Gun style shot of the men who just came back from saving so many people. Heroes who describe just how they do their jobs, like a Coast Guard swimmer. And what we do is we'll do a rescue checklist part two for the deployment of the swimmer. And I'll either go down on the cable or during the day I'll jump out of the helicopter. But before he jumps, he looks for the so-called leaders on the ground, citizens who look like they're in charge and could keep him safe from being swarmed by victims. When you're sitting on the edge of the helicopter right here before you go down, what's going through your mind? Just look around and assess the situation. Up there, you try to count how many people you got because you don't want to go down and be overrun by people. You just try to see where they're at, where you're going to hoist from, who you're going to try to talk to, you can get a sense of who's in charge down there on some of these rooftops. As the swimmers help the victims get into the baskets, the hoisters must constantly watch the cables. I don't want to have too much slack because a basket can, well, the slack in the cable can get looped around and cause a snag hazard. On the other side, if you don't have enough slack, if something happens, the basket be yanked off the deck and uh, can end up injuring somebody. And the pilots are watching for hazards like power lines and debris. It was tough to, uh, to work one building out of the corner of your eye. You'd see uh, a lot of other areas that you personally weren't going to get to, and you just hope somebody else was. This morning, he told his two-and-a-half-year-old he was coming home. She was crying, and I said, hey, I'll come get you after getting another bag of gas. So I don't even know where I was this morning in my bed. Glad to be home. Yeah, I am. They haven't been told whether they'll be going back or not, but everything they saw, all the images in their minds, those are not going anywhere. Do you think people have an understanding of how bad the devastation was just watching TV? I don't think so. Uh, when we got back to our hotel room last night to fly down, I was watching the aerial footage and it's just, it doesn't do justice with at the level we're flying at, you know, the, the power lines and everything where we were flying. It's incredible what, what happened to that city. Did you ever break down in the middle of all this? No. There was only one time where I had uh, one moment I saw a, a toddler that was uh, floating, but as soon as we turned the corner, saw four people off a rooftop, so I took my mind off it and went in there, did our job, picked them up, and got them out of there. The Coast Guard in Miami still has 35 people in the area hit by Hurricane Katrina, and no word yet on when they'll be back here. 
In Opalaka, Lori Stein, CBS4 News. They are just heading back, but tonight a caravan of South Florida support is heading to the hurricane-ravaged region. Thirteen trucks make up this convoy of care. CBS4's Dave Malkoff is traveling with the convoy and has this report from the road. Well, good evening from Midway, Florida, which may end up being the halfway point through our trip. It has been a long one that started last night in Doral. You're all ready to go? Miami-Dade Commissioner Jose Pepe Diaz has big dreams for these big rigs. You be careful. You're going in through these trucks. A police escort for precious cargo heads out at midnight. 12 o'clock is going to come awfully fast. More than a dozen tractor trailers packed with hurricane relief, staple foods, and a taste of Miami. This is a, uh, a sample of what Miami is, our food. We're going to go into an affected area that nobody's been to before. Katrina's needy stretch way beyond Bourbon Street. It is a long, dark road we're headed down. Because there's times in life like this storm that each and every one of us are caused to do a little gut check and really find out what's on the inside of us. It really shows us what we're made of. Anytime you face adversity, they say it introduces you to yourself. This trip has plenty of get to know you time. Okay. Thank you. This will be all night, all day, as the dragon flies. It's over 400 miles from Miami to the Florida Panhandle border. As the truck drives, it's longer and more sleepless. He slept some, now he's gonna drive, I'll sleep some. It has to be done. Somebody has to get the stuff up there. And our next stop is about 160 miles west of here. The truck drivers have to get some much needed rest and we have to gas up again. As we get further west towards the disaster area, gas is harder and harder to find. At this point, we don't know exactly where we're going because the Florida National Guard hasn't told us for security and logistical reasons, but we will get there when we get there and we'll take you along the way. In Midway, Florida, just outside of Tallahassee, I'm Dave Falkoff, CBS 4 News. If you would like to donate to Hurricane Katrina relief efforts, you can call our Neighbors for Neighbors phone bank. Our volunteers are standing by taking your calls at 305-597-4404. You can also dial toll-free 877-411. 4242. Broward County school officials are ready to enroll Katrina's youngest victims, children who were displaced by the hurricane, some of them traumatized, and are now staying right here in South Florida. CBS 4's Robin Kish has the story. They had no car to drive out of Gulfport before Hurricane Katrina slammed ashore, so Reverend Branch, his wife, and two children rode out the storm in their apartment until the ceiling caved in. Luckily, a downstairs neighbor gave them refuge until the storm passed. We've lost a lot of, lot of people that our kids go to school with, people that you know, we work with. I mean, our job was destroyed there. Everything just gone. Everything's flattened. Our homes look like french fries just sitting on a platter. For a week, they slept on their outdoor balcony, praying for someone to find them before they starved. Then, somehow, in a town without electricity, their phone rang, and relatives came to the rescue. They say it's a miracle they survived. There are people that are still trapped and you know crying, and you can hear the voices through the night and the day. Help over here, somebody, anybody, and you know it, it plays with your mind. Me and my friend, she's a police officer. We went out looking for people. And we walked up on pieces of bodies, you know, and we just broke down and just cried. Now that they're safe with family in Lauder Hill, they're seeking assistance at this Red Cross reception center in Plantation. Glad to see their 10-year-old daughter's tears turn to smiles. I'm interested in going to school and getting a house instead of living with somebody else, a family members. The Bustamante family has come here, too, from New Orleans. They evacuated before Katrina hit and now want to get their six-year-old son enrolled in school. It's a concern. You know, he's in the gifted program. He's in the talented program. He's in the French program. So we're going to try to find school as soon as possible. The Broward County School District says children can enroll at any nearby school. Transcripts and proof of residency requirements are not required. Counseling will also be provided. We've got about 30 uh, so far. But to be quite honest with you, we're expecting that number to, to increase exponentially. Since this reception center opened on Saturday, more than 300 people have come here seeking help. And that number is expected to grow. The center has expanded its hours from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. In Plantation, Robin Kish, CBS 4 News.
Tonight we have word that Florida's state tax on gas could be suspended to ease your pain at the pump. State Democratic leaders have sent a letter to Governor Bush calling on him to issue an executive order and put the state tax on hold for at least a 30-day period. The state currently collects almost 21 cents for every gallon of gas sold. And we have more coverage on the chaos and crisis after Katrina ahead over the next 90 minutes of CBS 4 News. Coming up in about 10 minutes, an 88-year-old woman rescued today from her New Orleans home after being trapped alone for nine days without power or water. See where that we have seen over the last week with our own eyes that not enough was done. And uh, we want to find out why. Then at 5.30, the blame game begins as a Senate committee launches an investigation into the federal response to Hurricane Katrina. Then at 6 o'clock, lessons not learned from Hurricane Andrew. There are some eerie similarities between Katrina and Andrew 13 years later. We are following other news for you tonight. Mourners pay final respects to the Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. CBS 4 is live in D.C. A scare for three South Florida families after three boaters disappear overnight on the water. The story and a happy reunion coming up. Plus, a teenage wife turns state witness and takes the stand against her husband, who's accused of murdering a 91-year-old South Florida man. The disturbing details are coming up. South Florida firefighters find a body inside a burning apartment. Now homicide detectives are looking into it. And another reminder, as we look live from our Neighbors for Neighbors phone banker, volunteers are taking your calls all day long at 305-597-4404 and toll free at 1-877-411-4242. Two, please call and help the victims of Hurricane Katrina. We'll be right back. What's going on right now inside the strike zone? CBS 4 News is all over the Gulf Coast with Brian Andrews, the only local TV reporter there since the beginning. David Malkoff, following the relief effort from South Florida to the heart of the worst hit areas. And Mike Kirsch, a reporter who's covered some of the world's most dangerous stories. Crisis and chaos after Katrina. For the most complete team coverage, keep it on CBS 4 News. Write a 2005 Expedition and get Ford Family Plan savings of over $9,300. Now at your South Florida Ford dealer. You gotta ride it, ride it. Nature's own white wheat. All the nutrition of wheat bread with a look and taste of white. For a limited time, Lincoln Mercury is extending our invitation to pay the same low prices our employees and their families pay. The Lincoln Mercury Family Plan. Through September 6th, you'll get our discounts on every 2005 Mercury, including Montego, Mountaineer, Grand Marquis, Monterey, Sable, and Mariner, even the 2006 Mariner. Now, drive the 2005 Grand Marquis for a family plan price as low as $17,231. No hassles, no gimmicks. From the Lincoln Mercury family to the American family, welcome. If you see news in the making, dial star CBS4 on your T-Mobile cellular phone. A sad day in Washington today as family, friends, and admirers gather at the Supreme Court to pay their last respects to Chief Justice William Rehnquist. His flag-draped coffin lies in repose until tomorrow's funeral. CBS4's Stacey Case live now in Washington, D.C. with more. Stacey. Good evening, Robin. Maggie, the Supreme Court building will be open until 10 o'clock Eastern time tonight to give people a chance to see the Chief Justice. They've been standing in these long lines all day, being allowed in about 20 people at a time. William Rehnquist will be laid to rest tomorrow. As the nation paused, a somber moment amid a sea of tears. Fellow justices lined the steps to the nation's highest court as William Rehnquist's flag-draped casket made its way inside for the final time. 
Americans also stood in long lines to pay their last respects to the Chief Justice who spent 33 years at the High Court. If you think about how many Chief Justices there have been over time, it's a very historic moment. It's part of the reason that I'm here. Among the pallbearers, former Rehnquist clerk John Roberts, who's now in line to succeed him. Rehnquist, who pushed the court to the right, was never able to pull together the splitter justices to adopt his own judicial views. But he did preside over two historic moments in court history, the impeachment hearings of President Clinton and the controversial 2000 presidential election. Rehnquist was a great manager, a great administrator of the court, and a great advocate for the judicial system. Confirmation hearings for Judge Roberts are now delayed until next week, out of respect. Chief Justice Rehnquist. Now that two seats are open, President Bush is getting plenty of pressure to appoint another woman to fill Sandra Day O'Connor's seat. Definitely I'd like to see a woman and a minority. It would be great if you could have both. President Bush says he'll wait until after Judge Roberts' hearings to nominate a second justice. With two vacancies, President Bush has a rare opportunity to move the court in a more conservative direction for a generation to come. Chief Justice Rehnquist will be buried at Arlington National Cemetery tomorrow in a private ceremony. President Bush, by the way, is scheduled to make some remarks at his funeral. Reporting live from the Supreme Court, Stacy Case, CBS 4 News. The man best known for his portrayal of goofy first mate Gilligan has died. Bob Denver played the role from 1964 to 1967, but became a cult classic as he was seen thousands of times in syndication. He was surrounded by his wife and four children when he passed away this afternoon due to complications from cancer. Cancer treatment. Bob Denver was 70 years old. Still ahead tonight, Oprah Winfrey in the Katrina strike zone and overcome with emotion. And this should never happen again in this country. The Queen of Talk is talking to storm survivors tonight. It's a side of the story you won't see anywhere else coming up. First 88 years old, nine days alone after Katrina, you'll hear from a feisty storm survivor next. Closed captioning sponsored by City Furniture. Now offering same-day delivery seven days a week. The final days of the Ford Family Plan are here. Now's your last chance to get employee pricing on many Ford vehicles. Plus, take up to $6,000 cash back. One low price, no hassles. Employee pricing, plus up to $6,000 cash back. And soon, at your South Florida Ford dealer. You know you gotta ride it. Is DNA really evidence? For Jen, truth was relative. Then she got Washington Mutual free checking. She liked the no hidden fees, and they inspired Jen to be more truthful. Your Honor, my client pleads guilty. I what? Well, you are. Hi, I just changed lanes without signaling. Oh, and my plates are expired. Nice deck. Not really. We built it ourselves. Way to go, Jen. We appreciate your bold honesty. Our best shows tonight on CBS4. Brought to you by B's Fine Sponsors. Nature's own white wheat. All the nutrition of wheat bread with a look and taste of white. It's simple. I shop rooms to go because they're honest and they treat me like I'm intelligent. There's no pushy salesman breathing down my neck. No price games and no fake sales. And rooms to go always has the furniture I want in stock. So when they say they deliver in days, rooms to go delivers. Great room packages put together to the last detail at the lowest prices anywhere. There's no hassle. No decorating runaround. Rooms to go makes it easy. Just plain easy. New at 6, surrounded by water and chaos, New Orleans residents refusing to leave their homes. CBS 4's Brian Andrews and Mike Kirsch are there live. Finger pointing over federal aid. The lessons we may not have learned after Andrew. New at 6. 
Nine days after Hurricane Katrina ravaged the Gulf Coast, an amazing and uplifting story of survival. Sure is. 88-year-old Elvira Hurst was rescued from her New Orleans home after being trapped for nine days without electricity or water. A feisty survivor says when she finally heard rescuers outside, she was determined to be heard. And I heard you all this morning. I said, uh, I almost raced out to the front door and you heard me screaming. <laughs> Good thing I don't have the throat trouble or something. Well, they heard her. Elvira's only contact with the outside world before being rescued was through a tiny transistor radio. Good to have good news out of there mm, sure tonight. Is. And I got to tell you, when I was on maternity leave, I watched you both, and you did such a great job it's great during to all this hurricane. Well, it is so wonderful yeah. to have you back. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. And just in time for a tropical depression. Yay. Yeah, just in time to talk about it. Oh, it's going away. It's not going to bother us, but it could turn out to be something for our state again. Here we go outside right now. It's actually not a bad evening out there because the clouds have held the temperatures down. 86 here at Weather Control, but it does feel like 94. Sticking to scale 7. That's normal for summer. No rain here today. Now, check the radar in motion. Going back to 6 o'clock this morning. Really coming down in Broward and southern Palm Beach County. Now, watch the circulation out here. Here's the circulation right in here. Very disorganized thing. And we see a few of these showers beginning to rotate around right here may affect us, especially in Broward later on, but no big deal. We're going to get a little fringe effect. Here's a satellite picture. There you can see the clouds going in, center of rotation right about Grand Bahama, but all the bad weather is to the north, and as it moves to the north, obviously, that's going to take the bad weather further and further away from us. There is TD-16. There is Tropical Storm Nate. There is Hurricane Maria all lined up in a row, and there's actually a disturbance in the Gulf over here as well that's not developing in anything, at least right now, thankfully. Now, there is the tropical depression. We put a question mark on there for tomorrow because it may very well be tropical storm Ophelia at that time as it begins to move away. We just have the fringe effect. You can see on the true view, most of the rain is to the north. So patchy sunshine here and just a few showers as we get that little fringe, southwestern fringe of the storm. On to Thursday we go, and the system moves very close to the coast is the thinking up off of central Florida. Summertime weather here uh, up into the 90s. 90s, most of the storms in the afternoon here, and how strong will it be? That's why the question mark could be quite a strong tropical storm. Slight chance it could even be a hurricane. Then by the weekend, we have a weak tropical wave coming our way. Looks like best chance of storms would be on Sunday. Kind of summertimey kind of weather coming up. All right, out in the tropics, the other two storms that are out there. First of all, tropical storm Nate. It's a 60 mile an hour tropical storm. Going to stall near Bermuda and then move northeast. So the only threat might be the Bermuda and the hurricane out there, Maria. It's an 80 mile an hour hurricane now. It also is just going to move on out to sea. Okay, our forecast in detail then tonight. Some showers, especially in Broward, but anybody could see one, and I don't think they'll be widespread, about 74 for a low. Lots of clouds tomorrow and a few showers around, but not a lot of rain. 88 as the system slowly moves to the north. Small craft use caution. Northwest to west winds about 10 to 20 knots offshore. And there you see summery kind of weather up into the 90s, and then this possibility of a tropical wave making a little wetter here on Sunday. That's it. Thank you, Brian. Now it's time to check in with Joy Purdy for a look at what's next at 5:30. Joy, welcome back, Mags. Folks, despite all of the damage and destruction, a group of people say they are determined to keep New Orleans energy alive. New at 5:30, hear their story of staying put as nearly an entire city evacuates around them. Also, a look at how the storm has changed the Gulf states forever, from the coastline to communities and lives shattered by the storm. Plus, Oprah's emotional visit to evacuees who are now calling Houston home, what you didn't see in her special today. Those stories and more when CBS 4 News at 530 starts in just a few minutes. Paris Hilton's sex tape confessions. Next ET, topless on the cover of Vanity Fair. She bears all about her romp caught on tape. Then a different side of Dr. Phil. We break news about his new season. Next ET. Weeknights at 7 on CBS 4. Before Survivor Guatemala begins. They're sent on an 11-mile trek through the jungles of Guatemala. The 16 new castaways will be tested physically. We need some help. It will wear out the toughest guys. And mentally like never before. And if you're expecting a big twist, there won't be one. This time, there'll be two. Oh, my God. Survivor Guatemala premieres Thursday, September 15th, only on CBS. It's going to be the toughest Survivor we've ever done.
For a limited time, Lincoln Mercury is extending our invitation to pay the same low prices our employees and their families pay. The Lincoln Mercury Family Plan. Through September 6th, you'll get our discounts on every 2005 Mercury, including Montego, Mountaineer, Grand Marquis, Monterey, Sable, and Mariner, even the 2006 Mariner. Now drive Montego for a family plan price as low as $21,954. No hassles, no gimmicks. From the Lincoln Mercury family to the American family, welcome. Our best shows in HD TV tonight on CBS4. Brought to you by Brandsmart USA. Big people, little people, older people, younger people. All kinds of people need medicines but don't have prescription coverage. It's personal to them, so it's personal to us. That's why we offer help at Pfizer Helpful Answers with all kinds of programs to help all kinds of people get the Pfizer medicines they need. No matter what your age or income, if you don't have prescription coverage, you can save on Pfizer medicines. You may even get them for free, depending on your income. So call us at 1-866-706-2400 to get personal help. One call for your Pfizer medicine and for your family's medicine. Call Pfizer Helpful Answers at 1-866-706-2400 or visit PfizerHelpfulAnswers.com because if you don't have prescription coverage, now one call fits all. Pfizer participates in the Partnership for Prescription Assistance, a way to get help paying for your other medicines. That does it for CBS 4 News at 5. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again at 6. As a moment to properly do this, welcome back from maternity Thank leave. You. It's so great to have you here. Thank we'll you. We'll be back at 6. As Maggie said, CBS 4 News at 5.30 with Joy Purdy and Elliot Rodriguez starts right now. Now, live. This is CBS 4 News at 5.30. Your weather station is tracking Tropical Depression 16, a system that already has parts of Florida under a warning. Now this system could strengthen into our next tropical storm. CBS 4 meteorologist Craig Setzer is live in weather control with details for us. Craig? Joy and Elliot, things are looking uh, pretty good and uh, as far as we're concerned in terms of precipitation across the area, here was 6 a.m. this morning when we were still seeing some heavy rain moving on shore. As we put it into motion here, you can see the circulation and you can see the decrease in the precipitation as the center is starting to move a little bit to the north. We're seeing some improvement. Drier air is beginning to work its way in, so our chances for rain have actually gone down. Here's the latest advisory as a 5 o'clock tropical depression 16, 26.7 north, 78. 5 west, 30 mile an hour winds. Very little movement, just almost a drift to the north, 175 miles to the to the southeast of Cape Canaveral. The next several days, a very slow meandering track generally to the north or north-northwest there. Now there are some possibilities from some of the computer programs that it could move more to the northwest. Uh, likewise, some of the computer programs showing that it'll move more to the north, but it is forecast to slowly strengthen and it looks like though the worst weather will be pulling away from us heading up to the north. And with that in mind, tropical storm warnings in effect for the Treasure Coast from Jupiter north to Titusville. Also, tropical storm warnings in effect in the Bahamas, the Northwest Bahamas, Bimini, the Berries, Abaco, and Grand Bahama. Here's what's going on elsewhere in the tropics. Here's the water vapor loop. There is 16 close to us. There is tropical storm Nate off to our east. Hurricane Maria moving out of the picture there. And an upper low in the Gulf of Mexico that we will also watch. We're also watching this dry air that is gradually getting its way closer. And it may actually bring us some nice weather for a change. That forecast is coming up in a bit. Thank you, Craig. Water levels in New Orleans are dropping a week after levees designed to protect the city were breached during Hurricane Katrina. Those levees have finally been plugged, but the contaminated water could be around for months, bringing a serious threat of disease. Also tonight, the president says he will head up an investigation into government response to Katrina. Plus, a plan to send cruise ships to help evacuees has stalled. Apparently, some people in shelters just don't want to move again. And more fires broke out today in New Orleans as crews found a place to put bodies discovered throughout the area. CBS 4's Brian Andrews live in Kenner outside New Orleans. What is the latest, Brian? Hi, Joy. Let me show you some videotape we shot a short time ago of one of the major fires that was burning in the downtown area. This is video from the Garden District. Apparently a natural gas line had ruptured and ignited a fire in one of the old uh, very old mansions in the Garden District. And what firefighters had to do is they had to scoop down an aerial buckets 
from the helicopters and use the floodwaters to try to bring this fire under control. Now, let me take you to another piece of videotape. We've talked about the death toll here. It could exceed 10,000. Well, already one of the areas, uh, one of the towns on the outskirts of New Orleans has been set up as a makeshift mortuary. We're told that teams of morticians have been scouring the city today, and they've been bringing back bodies to, the, uh, to that location uh, where they're going to try to identify them and notify the next of kin. Uh, meantime, the good news, of course, is that the water is heading out of New Orleans. This is video of one of the pumps along the 17th Street Canal uh, or waterway there uh, that, that, that is working. The good news is that the electricians got uh, the juice to not only the pumps, but a couple of the downtown buildings, and the water level is going down. That has New Orleans Mayor Ray Nagin in a much better mood. I'm starting to see rays of light uh, all throughout what we're doing. We're starting to accumulate uh, accomplishments. Uh, you already know the story on search and rescues. Uh, we think that we have been spanning the city in a very effective way. And we can tell you that there is concern this evening about the, the possibility of the spread of disease. They have already confirmed that in the floodwaters they found E. coli bacteria. There's concern about mosquitoes transmitting the West Nile virus and the horrors that will be uncovered as these floodwaters go down and the stench from the rotting corpses. So it's uh, still a bad situation here, but it's starting to get better ever so slowly. A lot, though, to, to be mindful of as we make our way out and about through the streets of New Orleans in the coming days. Reporting from Kenner, I'm Brian Andrews, CBS 4 News. Brian, thank you. As some New Orleans residents return home from the fir for the first time since Katrina, many are overwhelmed by the amount of damage. Just outside Crescent City, homeowners saw their roofs ripped right open, trees toppled, and trucks overturned. Inside, homes were filled with the stench of mold and rotting food. Carpets are still soaked from floodwaters. The Coast Guard has released new video showing Katrina's dramatic impact on the Mississippi coastline. The surge of water decimated bridges and leveled four to five blocks from the seawall. Casino barges are seen wedged inland among the nearly 10-foot high piles of debris left behind by the storm's rising waters. In Mississippi, some people trying to get help from the government say they're getting the runaround. CBS 4's Aline Sergani is live right now in Biloxi, Mississippi with the latest from there. Aline? And hello to you, Joy and Elliot. I am standing at what the victims describe as the front line, smack dab in the middle of what they describe as a war zone. Take a look around and you can see why they're calling it a war zone. They say, listen, we know the people in Washington are making big promises. This is the challenge, though, to those people in Washington. Come down here to Mississippi, take a look around, and then maybe you'll understand just how difficult it is to imagine that help truly is on the way. Alvin Murray has had just about enough. If I had to rely on the government, I think I'd be starving right now. He says he survived Hurricane Katrina only to get slammed by the federal government. Our cameras followed him as he tried to get help from FEMA. For four days, I've been, I've been trying to call this number, and, it, and every, uh, every time I call the number, it's, it's always, uh, the line is always busy. FEMA is promising it's doing all it can with field offices set up throughout the disaster zone. But when we arrived at one office... I'm not even a FEMA employee. Marlene Minor is a hurricane victim who is seeking shelter at this motel when she says a real FEMA worker approached her and asked her for help in doing his job. Just try. I don't know any of their guidelines or anything because I'm not an employee. Some survivors have been lucky, like Karina Kerner. She managed to reach FEMA by phone. It's very frustrating, but I mean, it'll get done. I've got an application. FEMA announced it's issuing debit cards so people can buy personal items, but many frustrated victims know nothing about it. How, how can FEMA help me when you can't get in contact with them? Alvin Murray has no money to live, to eat, or to put gas in his car. And right now, he's not blaming Mother Nature, but President Bush. I give him a D. You know, I wouldn't give him an F because he's trying, but he's tried too late. FEMA is authorized to provide emergency cash grants up to $26,200 per person to disaster victims. And people can apply for special unemployment benefits and temporary jobs. Alvin Murray is still trying to take the first step. Maybe you need a, a helmet, a hard helmet, or yeah, uh, some boots or something. But uh, I stuck my head up in it and I, I didn't go no further. And coming out live now, trying to take the step, the first step, but he says tripping uh, over all of the debris, literally and figuratively. Now listen, FEMA says in addition to that 800 number, there is also a web page victims could log on to. But the victims say, what is the government thinking? 
how do they expect us to really have access to a computer? And even if we did have access to a computer, the victims say, there are no phone lines to log on to that internet. So at the moment, they say they are in dire need of help and they want it now. Reporting live from Biloxi, Mississippi, Aline Sergani, CBS 4 News. While many people are now getting relief, it took several days before federal aid arrived in the Gulf Coast, and that has some politicians pointing fingers. CBS 4's Jennifer Santiago here with that story. Jennifer. Well, Joy, a Senate committee announced today it will initiate a probe into the government's failure to provide help more quickly to Katrina's victims, with plenty of politicians spreading the blame. And after a weekend of bickering between the Louisiana governor and the president over control of law enforcement efforts, looks like the two have made up. We are partners in this effort. We are a team. Louisiana Governor Kathleen Blanco changes her tone after an hour and a half meeting with President Bush Monday. At the center of their dispute, whether federal or state officials should control law enforcement efforts during the rescue and recovery in the immediate aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. I was very concerned about giving up law enforcement authority. Fire Though Blanco says she and fire. FEMA are operating as a team, some top and Democrats aren't interested in playing ball with FEMA Director Michael Brown, instead demanding his resignation. Mr. Brown was regrettably uh, a, a, an administrator or an officer or the head of an Arabian Horse Association, hardly qualifying him to address the kind of problems he's looking at now. Brown will most certainly face some tough questions now that a Senate committee has announced today it will look into what went wrong in the aftermath of Katrina. Democratic Senator Joe Lieberman is on that committee. You have seen over the last week with our own eyes that not enough was done. And uh, we want to find out why. And finding out why is a priority that transcends party lines with Republican Senator Susan Collins, the committee chairwoman, stating she cannot understand why FEMA was not better prepared. Katrina was a disaster that scientists, emergency management officials, and political leaders had anticipated for years. Yet the initial response was woefully inadequate. Out of the darkness will come some light. President Bush was less interested in talking about what went wrong, rather focusing on the task at hand, meeting with his cabinet today to talk about recovery efforts. First mission, of course, is to save lives. And uh, so long as any life is in danger, we got work to do. The president did respond to criticism that his administration was slow to react, and he says he intends to find out why. We still live in an unsettled world. We want to make sure that we can respond properly if there's a WMD attack or another major storm. And so I'm going to find out uh, over time. Well, President Bush added that he has asked Vice President Cheney to travel to the hurricane-ravaged region on Thursday to assess just how well the recovery efforts are proceeding. Reporting live, Jennifer Santiago, CBS 4 News. Neighbors for Neighbors has sent food and medical supplies to hurricane victims in the Gulf, but there is still so much more South Florida can do. CBS 4's Maribel Rodriguez is live in our volunteer phone bank with details how we can all help. Maribel. Well, Elliot, they can start off by picking up the phone and calling 305-597-4404 and saying, I want to help. So far, Neighbors for Neighbors has collected more than a quarter million dollars, and that's just from viewers like you sending five... Ten, twenty dollars. I hear the phones ringing. I love that. I, I want to go ahead and show you one of our younger viewers, Gabby. She sent three dollars. Three dollars. So how can you help? Call 305-597-4404. As you can see, our volunteers are standing by answering your calls. Also, our toll-free number, 1-877-411-4242. Right. Neighbors for neighbors. Remember, no donation is too small. And these, this money is definitely going to make a, lie, a difference in the lives of the victims. Live from the Neighbors for Neighbors phone bank, Maribel Rodriguez, CBS 4 News. A man accused of beating an elderly person to death so he could marry a teenage girl goes to trial, and now the girl is taking the stand. That story is coming up. A South Florida home battered by Hurricane Katrina comes crashing down with a little help. I'm Maggie Rodriguez, live in the newsroom with stories you'll see all new tonight at 6 o'clock. Brian Andrews and Mike Kirsch are the only South Florida TV reporters in New Orleans. They'll have the latest on the recovery efforts, residents who are refusing to leave, and how a piece of New Orleans history was saved from becoming history. We have live team coverage out of Louisiana, plus the disturbing similarities after Katrina and Andrew. Did some lessons go unlearned? Those stories and more on CBS 4 News at 6. We'll be right back.
someone in your family always going in different directions, there's one sure way to bring you back together. Publix Premium Certified Beef. We're more selective than other supermarkets when we choose our beef, so you'll always get steaks of exceptional quality. After all, the easiest way to gather everyone around the table is to put tender, delicious steaks on it. Publix, where serving you has been our pleasure for 75 years. You are witnessing the latest medical technology, a painless, non-invasive radiation treatment that can accurately kill tumors and protect healthy tissue, treating lesions that were once considered untreatable. Introducing CyberKnife, only available at the CyberKnife Center of Miami. CyberKnife can effectively treat certain cancerous tumors of the brain, spine, lung, pancreas, prostate, and more. The CyberKnife Center of Miami, tomorrow's treatment today. For a limited time, Lincoln Mercury is extending our invitation to pay the same low prices our employees and their families pay. The Lincoln Mercury Family Plan. Through September 6th, you'll get our discounts on every 2005 Mercury, including Montego, Mountaineer, Grand Marquis, Monterey, Sable, and Mariner, even the 2006 Mariner. Now, drive the 2005 Grand Marquis for a family plan price as low as $17,231. No hassles, no gimmicks. From the Lincoln Mercury Family to the American Family, welcome. My view on prescriptions has always been, honey, if you need it, take it. But lately, I wonder, do we always need a prescription? Like for my arthritis pain, is a prescription so much better than anything else? So I talked to my doctor. It turns out that I could take something that works just as well as prescription ibuprofen, but with fewer risks. Tylenol arthritis pain is different. It works as well as prescription ibuprofen, and used as directed, no other pain reliever is safer. If you see news in the making, dial star CBS4 on your T-Mobile cellular phone. Miami-Dade police are investigating a suspicious fire they say may have been set to cover up a murder. CBS4's Gary Nelson live in Cutler Ridge with more details. Gary. Well, throughout the day, investigators have been calling this fire and this fatality suspicious. They're no longer using the word suspicious. Now the word is murder. Within the last hour, Miami-Dade police declaring that this man was murdered here in his Cutler Ridge apartment by a killer or killers who apparently set fires to destroy evidence. The light of day revealed heartache at the Cutler Meadows Apartments, a family distraught over the death of a man in a very suspicious fire. They struggled to make sense of it. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say. The fire was called in just after midnight, apartment number 119. Arriving firefighters found 51-year-old Jose Piguero dead on the floor and surrounded by multiple fires. They did find multiple spots where there was fire within the apartment. So they said there were several fires within the apartment. Um, how, I mean, obviously, when there's more, more, more than one spot, there's a possibility of more evidence to being damaged. The fires may not have killed the man, but rather might have been set to destroy evidence of another crime. Friends and neighbors say the victim was a quiet, likable fellow with lots of friends. He's a good man. He, I, don't, I don't understand who would do it to him or whatever, because he's real good. Whenever I would need him, he's there. I would always be here. I don't know. CSI Miami-Dade poured over the crime scene through the night and into the morning hours. Police not saying yet just what killed the man, but they are treating it as anything but an accident. And in just the last hour, police have declared that this is indeed a murder investigation now. Jose Peguero, we've learned, has a criminal history, but not a recent one. He was convicted of manslaughter some 20 years ago. Nothing to suggest now that that has anything to do with this. We're live in Cutler Ridge, Gary Nelson, CBS 4 News. A teenager testifies in the trial of her common law husband after the brutal stomping death of a 91-year-old man two years ago. 19-year-old Sophia Adams testified against 25-year-old Gabby Tennis. Police say Tennis committed the crime to get money to pay Adams' mother for her hand in marriage. 
Testimony should continue tomorrow, and Tennis could take the stand in his own defense. He faces first-degree murder charges. Craig Setzer is joining us, and uh, not a pretty day in South Florida. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, not a pretty day, but getting better. It looks like we're going to have an interval, a period, wow. several days of nice weather. Even with that TD out there? Even with the TD. The TD is moving slowly away from us. Good. So uh, we're on the right, right side of the TD this time, <laughs> and things are looking better. Let's show you what we are seeing so far today here in South Florida. What we're looking at now is a little bit of sunshine shine in that live shot in the camera there and we've seen 87 at MIA 84 Fort Lauderdale Hollywood 87 in Key West overnight lows in the 70s thanks to a little bit of rain cooling and about a third of an inch of rain in Fort Lauderdale. Here's what's going on right now across the area. This is TD 16 as we put it into motion here you can see a lot of the weather the rain and wind is up to the north and down here it's kind of one of these lopsided systems once again. The low pressure area is right there near Grand Bahama that's where the center is but as you can see all of the bad weather is up to the north north and it is forecast to remain to the north so our weather is actually going to be not too bad. A little bit of sunshine and a little bit of improvement weather wise. 5 o'clock advisory 26.7 north 78.5 west 30 mile an hour winds and just drifting right now to the north and forecast to develop or move slowly to the north northwest over the next several days so gradually moving away from us, although it's still going to stay a bit cloudy tomorrow with some showers around, some slow improvement as it moves away. It is forecast, though, to strengthen to a tropical storm. Elsewhere in the tropics, it remains busy. There is Tropical Storm Nate. There is Hurricane Maria. Maria is weakening now as it's getting closer to cooler water and some wind shear, but Nate is, in fact, strengthening. Elsewhere, we have a weak tropical wave down to our south in the islands, and the rest of the tropical Atlantic is quiet right now, very quiet. Caribbean also quiet. Gulf of Mexico and upper lows spinning there. Across the southeast U.S., a bit of cloudiness and showers in the Gulf. There is our tropical depression to the northeast. And stormy weather continuing there. Temperatures under the clouds and the rain, they're cool in the 70s and 80s in the northeast, though. Pretty nice day with temperatures under mostly sunny skies in the 70s. Here's our forecast for tonight. We're calling for it to be just about some showers around, especially in Broward. Otherwise, there's a bit of cloudiness, 74 for the low. Tomorrow, lots of clouds, a few showers around high near 88 degrees. Pollen count showing everything is low. The rest of the week is looking pretty good, a little more sunshine, and maybe, just maybe, that tropical wave on Sunday. Back to you. Thanks, Craig. Three South Florida boaters are safe and sound tonight. Hear their story of a terrifying night at sea, all new at six. Also, Oprah makes an emotional visit to people who lost everything in Hurricane Katrina. And call our Neighbors for Neighbors phone bank to help storm victims, 305-597-4404, or you can call them toll free, 1-877-411-4242. Stay with us. The burn says it's working. <clears throat> well, this is new. If it burns, it's working. Mm. Mm. Imagine a dental plan that kills germs without the burn. Crest Pro Health Oral Rinse, like the leading mouthwash, kills 99% of common germs that can cause bad breath, plaque, and gingivitis, but without the burn of alcohol. Mm. Crest Pro Health kills germs without the burn. Wake up to good health today. For a limited time only, stop by your local Publix and pick up Kellogg's Healthy Beginnings magazine, filled with valuable coupons worth over $20. Healthy living begins with healthy eating, and this free guide focuses on fiber, quick breakfast tips, heart health, and just as important, how to eat right and stay healthy. Available exclusively at Publix grocery stores. This magazine is all you need to have a healthy beginning every morning. For a limited time, Lincoln Mercury is extending our invitation to pay the same low prices our employees and their families pay. The Lincoln Mercury Family Plan. Through September 6th, you'll get our discounts on every 2005 Mercury, including Montego, Mountaineer, Grand Marquis, Monterey, Sable, and Mariner, even the 2006 Mariner. Now drive Montego for a family plan price as low as $21,954. No hassles, no gimmicks. From the Lincoln Mercury family to the American family, welcome. Presenting new hefty servant store interlocking plates. One plate can interlock to another to form a storage container to go from table to fridge to microwave and back. Plates are lids, lids are plates. New hefty servant store. Seasonal allergies are a fact of life, but symptoms can be controlled. Hi, I'm Darrell Savoni, your Publix pharmacist. 
Knowing when and how to treat your allergies is essential to feeling your best. Claritin Allergy Products provide effective non-drowsy relief for those who suffer from allergies. For long-lasting relief from your worst congestion, sinus pressure, and itchy, watery eyes without getting drowsy, try Claritin D. Look for non-drowsy Claritin D at your local Publix and take control of your allergies. Live Claritin Clear. New at 6, surrounded by water and chaos, New Orleans residents refusing to leave their homes. CBS 4's Brian Andrews and Mike Kirsch are there live, finger pointing over federal aid. The lessons we may not have learned after Andrew. New at 6. We're going to go to Jennifer Santiago and news out of Iraq concerning its former leader Saddam Hussein. Jennifer. Yeah, Elliot, Iraq's president said Saddam Hussein has confessed to quote unquote crimes, including killings during his regime. Now, the former Iraqi dictator has been awaiting trial in an undisclosed location in Iraq since his capture in December 2003. He met with his Iraqi attorney on Monday. That's the first time the two have met since July 12th. Now, Iraqi authorities had said last week that his trial would begin October 19th. Saddam Saddam Hussein faces the death penalty for numerous murder charges, including his role in a 1982 massacre where 143 people were killed. That is the latest from the breaking news desk. Jennifer Santiago, CBS 4 News. Thanks, Jennifer. The news at 6 is next. Here's Rob Hanrahan with some of the stories we're working on. Rob. Joy, coming up next at 6, we're tracking Tropical Storm 16. That's prompting tropical storm warnings for a portion of central Florida. CBS 4 has the only South Florida TV reporters in the New Orleans area. They're going to show us how the water pumps are finally working and how a piece of New Orleans history was spared by the storm. We'll also take you to the flood zone where some residents are refusing to leave their devastated homes. We have live team coverage from the New Orleans area and the state creates a hurricane help hotline. But how can we make sure the aid gets to the victims who need it? Details on those stories and more next at 6. For a limited time, Lincoln Mercury is extending our invitation to pay the same low prices our employees and their families pay. The Lincoln Mercury Family Plan. Through September 6th, you'll get our discounts on every 2005 Mercury, including Montego, Mountaineer, Grand Marquis, Monterey, Sable, and Mariner, even the 2006 Mariner. Now, drive the 2005 Grand Marquis for a family plan price as low as $17,231. No hassles, no gimmicks. From the Lincoln Mercury Family to the American Family, welcome. Our best shows tonight on CBS4, brought to you by these fine sponsors. With all you hear about menopause on TV, from your friends, it's confusing. How do you know what's really true? You talk to your doctor. The best source of information about the hot flashes, night sweats, and other changes you may be experiencing. You ask about diet and exercise and keeping your bones strong. Today, your doctor has more information than ever. Together, you can make decisions that are right for you. Get the facts. Get to your doctor or healthcare professional. Final days of the Ford Family Plan are here. Now's your last chance to get employee pricing on many Ford vehicles. Plus, pick up to $6,000 cash back. One low price, no hassles. Employee pricing, plus up to $6,000 cash back. And soon, at your South Florida Ford dealer. You know you gotta ride it. Our crews are live on the Gulf Coast after Katrina. For continuing coverage, keep it on four. Were you one of six million Floridians left in the dark this past hurricane season? Never lose your power again. No matter what happens, you can be comfortable and secure with an emergency standby generator, a backup system that automatically restores your power within 60 seconds and protects you 365 days a year. Protect your lifestyle, your assets, your home, your entire family. Personalized power systems. Never lose your power again. Call today. The real thing. I suggest we play a little game I like to call, Have You Met Ted? What? No, no, no. Have You Met Ted? <laughs> Jerk! <laughs> that was fun. The real thing. As of the last count, more than 15,000 people are calling Houston's Astrodome home. And this week, they got a special visitor, Oprah Winfrey. CBS 4's Beatrice Canals has that story. An emotional and clearly moved Oprah Winfrey witnessing firsthand so the chaos and catastrophe and Katrina left behind in New Orleans and elsewhere. This is why I feel, this is why I feel I should be let in. 
Because you had thousands of people who were in here for six days. The queen of talk not taking no for an answer from New Orleans mayor while visiting the Superdome, where thousands waited for days for help to arrive. It's bad. It's bad even with a mask, I have to tell you. Oprah also touring some of the hardest hit areas, getting an up close look at the damage and despair. Oh, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. She then traveled to Texas and Houston's Astrodome, where thousands displaced by Katrina are now being housed. The stories there, just as devastating as Katrina's wind and rain proved to be. Victims desperate to get their tales told and more desperate to get Oprah to help them find their loved ones. An Oprah special report, part two from Mississippi. Next Oprah. Oprah also focusing on Mississippi, where Katrina also wreaked havoc and claimed lives. And she's not alone. She's got company as she reports from the ravaged region. Chris Rock, Julia Roberts, John Travolta, Jamie Foxx, Faith Hill, Matthew McConaughey, Gail King, Lisa Marie Presley, Nate Berkus, Lisa Ling, and medical expert Dr. Oz. And wow. That report from Beatrice Canals. That'll do it for CBS 4 News at 530. Thank you for watching. And it's been a while since I say this. CBS 4 News at 6 with Rob Hanrahan and Maggie Rodriguez <laughs> starts right now. Now, live. This is CBS 4 News at 6. First at 6, your weather station keeping a close eye on Tropical Depression number 16, which formed right off our coast. Once again tonight, parts of Florida are under a tropical storm warning. And let's get right out to CBS 4 Chief Meteorologist Brian Norcross, live in weather control with details for us. Brian. All right, Rob and Maggie, the bottom line here, this is not a threat to South Florida. This is a threat to the areas in Florida north of the Palm Beaches on the East Coast. Here's a satellite picture with a radar over top of it. Now, this was this morning, and it was a cluster of showers here just north of the Bahamas, and little arm of that extended over into Broward County, where it rained hard early this morning, but now things are uh, developing and what's really happened, most obvious has happened, is the rain associated with this depression is all to the north of us and we think it's going to stay to the north of us. There is the center of rotation right now, right over Grand Bahama, but what's happening is dry air is filtering in like this and is keeping our part of the storm, or our part of the circulation uh, fairly dry. Now close up shot with the satellite picture shows you where the thunderstorms are, they are off to the east, but now the there's a cluster of thunderstorm. You see, every time it tries to develop near the center, it gets pushed to the north. There's kind of wind blowing over top of the system from the south. So for now, it's not uh, developing, but it looks like the atmospheric conditions will become more favorable. Winds are at 30 miles an hour, 175 miles southeast of Cape Canaveral at this time. Not moving very much, but it is forecast to slowly, slowly drift on up to the north or a little west of north, just offshore. Now, if it stays offshore, it's this is the uh, Gulf Stream out in here, and the water is quite warm and deep uh, warm water there, so there's fuel for intensifying, and this may be a strong tropical storm when it comes ashore somewhere up here in the northern part of the state or in Georgia or maybe South Carolina, potentially even a hurricane. We'll just have to see. There are the tropical storm warnings, Titusville down to Jupiter and also for the northern Bahamian Islands. Now we do have a couple other systems out there. Look at them all lined up in the tropics. Have more on that coming up here in just a few minutes. See you then. All right, Brian, now the top headlines in the Katrina crisis. Congress and the White House promise investigations into federal response. Some victims tonight are refusing to leave despite health warnings. And the mayor of New Orleans says he's finally seeing some progress. We have South Florida's only TV news team in the New Orleans area. We begin with CBS 4's Brian Andrews, live in Kenner. Brian. Maggie, a real concern about a potential health crisis as, of course, the floodwaters are going down, revealing the ugly horrors of the dead bodies that are now seeing the light of day. That, of course, brings with it the possibility of disease. They've already confirmed E. coli in the floodwaters, and now they're talking about the possibility of mosquitoes transmitting West Nile vi viruses and other potential killers. The pumps are working and the floodwaters are receding, but recovery efforts here in New Orleans are painfully slow. The mayor says he thinks it'll take more than three weeks to get all of the water out of here and then another month to clean up the storm debris. He says it's looking at another 90 days to restore power and other services. And when the water goes away, what the work crews will find will be gruesome. I think we're going to see the second wave of despair. I think this nation is going to be shocked one more time when we start pulling all these bodies out of these homes. 
While some fear that thousands of dead are in the floodwaters, rescue efforts continue in hopes of saving the living. Here at New Orleans International Airport, the military helicopters are coming and going, and they are still delivering people here to safety after plucking them out of the floodwaters downtown. I had to get out of there. Were you up on the roof waving them down, or what happened? No, I went in the middle of the street when I see them waving them down. It was time to go. Firefighters are actually using floodwaters to put out fires in the city from broken gas mains. Earlier today, this home in the historic Garden District fell to the flames. At the White House, the president says he'll lead an investigation into why it took so long for the federal government to get here with help after the storm. And Mr. Bush vows to cut the red tape that many claim has hobbled the relief efforts. Of course, bureaucracy is not going to stand in the way of getting the job done for the people. Can you see the gate from there? And back in New Orleans, as the living suffer, the city of the dead, the famous above-ground cemeteries, survives. The major thing I'm interested in is the storm didn't open any tombs. Some might credit that to Marie Laveau, the voodoo queen of New Orleans, who's rested here for more than 100 years. Now, while all this talk of cemeteries may be a bit creepy, it is the above-ground cemeteries, the French Quarter, and the Garden District that draw tourists here. And the mayor says he realizes that getting the tourist dollars back down here is going to be vital to New Orleans' recovery. Reporting live from Kenner, I'm Brian Andrews, CBS 4 News. And our team coverage continues now in Louisiana, where despite warning, some New Orleans residents refuse to go. CBS 4's Mike Kirsch, live in Kenner, with more on their stories tonight. Mike. Well, Rob, I've been talking with the police here, and they are saying that there are still 30,000 to 50,000 people who remain stranded in the water around New Orleans. Many of them simply don't want to leave. They say they fear there is nowhere to go. Now, we know there are shelters set up in many parts of the country, but they still don't believe they can get out, get out of here and find somewhere to live. Now, here's a very interesting note. Many of them are not leaving because they just don't want to leave their pets behind. We're not going to use any narration for this story. The pictures tell the story. Hear a gas leak behind us. You got a gas leak. You got a gas leak. You got to get out of there. There's a woman over here who's got to get out of this house. There's a gas leak right next door, but she doesn't want to leave because she doesn't want to leave her dog. You said there are a lot of dead people over there? Well, we don't know. I, don't, I can't say that for sure, but I know there's a lot of roofs over there that don't have holes in them. Well, we need to get out of here. Would you like to leave today? We want to know where you're going to bring her. That's we can't tell you, about. We can't Now, from an animal planet point of view, it's almost like the fall of Saigon for these dogs, for these pets. It's a, a really a terrible thing to see. There are hundreds of dogs and animals wandering all over the city with no place to go. We're live in Kenner, Mike Kirsch, CBS 4 News. Well, tomorrow night, Mike goes deep into the heart of New Orleans for firsthand stories of rescue, survival, and destruction. For some in New Orleans, a city cemetery is the only place to survive. Living with the dead. And the dead is providing us with life. And New Orleans cops, who saved so many, return home to find they could not save their homes from Katrina's wrath. There's no way to explain it. I'm, I'm like, no. Obviously, Katrina couldn't read. Join CBS 4's Mike Kirsch as he goes inside the strike zone for stories of triumph and tragedy you won't see anywhere else. And your overwhelming desire to help the victims of Hurricane Katrina is prompting the state to activate a special hotline tonight. CBS 4's Joan Murray explains how it all would work from Fort Lauderdale. One phone number, one coordinated effort to help Hurricane Katrina survivors, the Volunteer Florida Hotline. Volunteer Florida works in conjunction with FEMA, 
the Department of Homeland Security, the Red Cross, the Salvation Army, medical relief organizations, and countless other charities to coordinate their relief efforts. To contact Volunteer Florida, please call 1-800-FL-HELP-1. Just by word of mouth, we have received uh, all of this so far. The Millennium Mall in Hollywood is tapped into Volunteer Florida. They have 5,000 square feet of space to accept badly needed items like canned food, can openers, razors, and soap. We will have 14 semi-truck trailers uh, from the conv Convoy of Hope, and they said they will take everything. However, to please use common sense, clean clothes, not, you know, try, try to be um, um, courteous in what you're giving. The goal is to get everything into the right hands. Lessons learned from Hurricane Andrew. I know of truckload after truckload where things were just thrown in fields and dumped and people had, had never got to them at all. Uh, but we don't want that to happen. And we're very careful in what we're accepting and we want it all to get to the right places. The wrong place to drop off goods, the Salvation Army. They can't ship it. What they do need is your money. 100% of the money given to the Salvation Army during this disaster goes right to this disaster. Right now we're feeding, completely feeding people. Uh, and, and housing about 250,000 across the country. It's an assurance your money is going to the right place, but there are no guarantees when it comes to donations of food and water, so ask plenty of questions before you give. We did call the Volunteer Florida hotline, and we must warn you, there are some problems with misinformation. We are told they are working out the problems and that you should continue to try to call. In Fort Lauderdale, Joan Murray, CBS4 News. As you heard there in the wake of Katrina, there is no shortage of finger pointing over the slow response. And some of the criticism sounds an awful lot like what we heard after Hurricane Andrew. CBS 4's Elliot Rodriguez is here live with more. Elliot. Well, Maggie, changes should have been made after 1992 when Hurricane Andrew tore through South Florida. But instead, many believe the same mistakes are being made on the Gulf Coast. And those lessons were not learned. Thirteen years ago, Newsweek magazine asked a simple question. Did it have to be so bad? It was a reference to Hurricane Andrew, which until last week was the costliest natural disaster in U.S. history. We have a catastrophic disaster. Please come down and help us. We that are was Kate Hale. At As director of emergency management for Miami-Dade, she was furious that federal disaster relief Things like food, water, and housing took three days to arrive after Andrew. Where in the hell is the Calvary on this one? Hale's famous words ring true in New Orleans, and so do points in the Newsweek article which said that after Andrew, FEMA appeared brain dead, and that it took 48 hours for state and federal officials to grasp the extent of the damage. In New Orleans, history has repeated itself, even down to the days of the week. Just look at this. Both Andrew and Katrina hit on a Monday, but troops didn't arrive until Thursday. And in both cases, federal officials claim to have turned the corner on Saturday, leaving local officials seething. And I don't know whose problem it is. I don't know whether it's the governor's problem. I don't know whether it's the president's problem. But somebody needs to get their on the plane and sit down, the two of them, and figure this out. In the words of Newsweek, why did it have to be so bad again? Brian Norcross, who was pivotal in relaying life-saving information 13 years ago, says clearly lessons from Andrew were not learned. And so the only entity in our society that can come in and take control, bring in communications, bring in food, and bring in all variety of capabilities that are necessary, including security, is the federal military. It happened in Hurricane Andrew, and it was needed immediately here, but somehow that lesson of 13 years ago was completely forgotten at the federal level. Now, in the days following Hurricane Andrew, federal officials said, quote, this is not the time to place blame. Those are the same words we're hearing now, yet the same mistakes are being made. Elliot Rodriguez, CBS 4 News. But don't forget, you can still donate to victims of Hurricane Katrina. Just call the live Neighbors for Neighbors phone bank at 305-597-4404 or toll-free at 877-411-4242. For information on the storm recovery and hurricane relief efforts 24 hours a day, you can also log on to our website. That's cbs4news.com. Still to come tonight, several boaters and a dog are rescued after being stranded at sea for hours. We'll be live with the story. 
Ryan Norcross back here in weather control, putting together the forecast for how this tropical depression is going to affect us. I'll have that for you in a few minutes. Jim Barry here, up real soon in sports. The Canes talk about giving it away last night against the Knolls. And at the U.S. Open, Leighton Hewitt shows that he can do it. CBS News at 6, coming right back. What's going on right now inside the strike zone? CBS 4 News is all over the Gulf Coast with Brian Andrews, the only local TV reporter there since the beginning. David Malkoff, following the relief effort from South Florida to the heart of the worst hit areas. And Mike Kirsch, a reporter who's covered some of the world's most dangerous stories. Crisis and chaos after Katrina. For the most complete team coverage, keep it on CBS 4 News. Bed sores are preventable. Having a family member who's been mistreated in a nursing home can be devastating. Call and discuss your problem with one of our experienced attorneys free. Call 877-4-ELDERS. Urgent. Employee pricing plus. Save up to 8283 on Grand Cherokee. Save up to 5655 on Jeep Liberty. Employee pricing plus at Dave Jeep Chrysler. Southwest 158th Street and US 1. Mm -mm, too much sodium. Come on, one more lap. You can do it. Your doctor wants you to stay healthy. And at Care Plus, so do we. That's why Care Plus offers you four different health plans. One of them will be just what the doctor ordered. If you'd like more prescription coverage with a rollover option, choose the Care One plan. The Care Free plan pays your Medicare Part B premium and puts more money back into your Social Security check. Care Centers puts all your medical needs under one roof. And if your prescriptions are already covered, Care Extra gives you additional dental benefits. No matter which plan you choose, you always get more benefits than original Medicare. So, listen to your doctor. Eat right. Exercise. Take care of yourself. Remember, make healthy choices. And choose the health plan that's just right for you. Great job. Boat owners need to take special precautions to protect their boat against hurricane damage. Before a storm approaches, make a hurricane plan. The day before a storm, remove all canopies and anything that might come loose. This Hurricane 2005 safety tip is sponsored by South Florida Water Management District. Several boaters are happy to be back on dry land after they were stranded at sea for hours. They claim a telephone call mix-up may have delayed their rescue. CBS 4's Leif Davalos is live on Miami Beach at the Coast Guard Station with their story. Leif. Well, the boaters say they called 911 on their cell phones, but instead of getting help, they were told to call the Coast Guard instead. A pleasure cruise turns into a nightmare for Michael Saavedra, his two friends, and dog after their boat stalls out near Elliott Key. With no food or water and no radio to call the Coast Guard, Saavedra calls 911 on a cell phone with a low battery. And 911 just said, no, we can't help you. You have to call Star... Coast Guard, and I'm like, yo, this is an emergency. You should do it for me. But they didn't do anything. The trio weathered a rough, rainy night on their boat. They tried to use their cell again and were able to call a family member who contacted the Coast Guard. They were spotted this morning by Parks Ranger, and Sito brought them back to Black Point Marina. But the question remains as to why the 911 operator who answered the call didn't get them help. While we don't know which agency the 911 operator belonged to, City of Miami Police Department spokesman Delbra Schmoss says the dispatcher's job is to get help. Circumstances were exigent enough that we would have moved to get the appropriate jurisdiction there to contact them and, and get them the information they needed so they could get out and save those people because ultimately that's what it's about, saving lives. And both the city of Miami and Miami-Dade County Police Department say their 911 dispatch would have sent help and never would have referred them to another agency. The Coast Guard, meanwhile, always advises boaters to be prepared and to always have a radio on board. We're live on Miami Beach. Leave Davalos, TBS 4 News. Well, the tropics are busy and so is weather control. Coming up next, we'll check back in with Chief Meteorologist Brian Norcross with the latest on Tropical Depression 16 and our local forecast. Plus, another reminder, you can still donate to victims of Hurricane Katrina. There you see one of our volunteers at the Neighbors for Neighbors phone bank. Call them at 305-597-4404 or toll free 877-411. And here's a look at the numbers on Wall Street. The Dow closed up uh, a little more than 141 points. The Nasdaq up more than 25 and the S&P 500 also up. We'll be right back with more news.
all ages can have their daily routines limited by arthritis and osteoporosis. From headaches to muscle aches, Advil liquid gels are faster and stronger on tough arthritis pain. Advil is the only liquid-filled capsule clinically proven to work fast, and it's gentle on your stomach, too. Women can also help maintain strong bones and reduce the risk of osteoporosis with calcium-rich Caltrate. In a clinical trial, Caltrate significantly reduced the risk of repeat vertebrae fractures in postmenopausal women. Treat yourself right and take care of your health. Sponsored by Wyeth, makers of Advil and Caltrate. Sell your house in 24 hours. Call 1-800-NO-AGENT. Do no repairs. Pay no commissions. Call 1-800-NO-AGENT. Get an offer on your house now. Call 1-800-NO-AGENT. Have your cake and eat it too. Call 1-800-NO-AGENT. It's gotten into Rusty. The new French Toast Festival down there at the IHOP. Bonjour. Don't worry. It's a limited time off. It's French Toast Festival at IHOP. Try luscious stuffed French toast, tempting cinnamon swirl, or delicious classic French toast. Served with all your favorites starting just $4.99, it's an irresistible deal. IHOP. Come hungry, keep happy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bob from FPL. Hey, what do you live for? Nah, my kids. Is he a fisherman in the making? What does he live for? Ice cream. A good shot. The ocean. That one was mediocre. My family. My mom. Your mom? <laughs> hey, what do you live for? My fiance will be here. You better say that, especially <laughs> on TV. <laughs> no matter what your reasons are for staying safe, you should always stay away from power lines. Be sure to look up when using ladders, antennas, or pruning saws. Safety is everyone's responsibility. I live for my family now, for her and for the baby. That's exactly what we live for. <laughs> Wake up to good health today. For a limited time only, stop by your local Publix and pick up Kellogg's Healthy Beginnings magazine, filled with valuable coupons worth over $20. Healthy living begins with healthy eating, and this free guide focuses on fiber, quick breakfast tips, heart health, and just as important, how to eat right and stay healthy. Available exclusively at Publix grocery stores. This magazine is all you need to have a healthy beginning every morning. Closed captioning sponsored by City Furniture. Now offering same-day delivery seven days a week. CBS4 Weather is sponsored by Miccosukee Tribe of Indians of Florida. If you see news in the making, dial star CBS4 on your T-Mobile cellular phone. Brian Norcross here with the weather, and that is a busy-looking map you have going right it's now. It's an amazing thing. They all came from this area of low pressure. It came down from the north, unusually far south for this time of year. Bing, 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 man. There's actually one in the Gulf, too, oh, by the wow. way, which is not going to bother New Orleans, but it may, it may actually become a depression and head west. So it's uh, all from one long area of low pressure. Very often that happens late in the season, but this one came south fairly early. Okay, here we go outside right now. It's a pretty nice night out there, 85 here at Weather Control in West Aiden Doral. It's 83 Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, and 86 Key West. Feels like 93 with the stickiness scale at 7 right in the afternoon. Average for summer range, northwest breeze at 7. That's the circulation around the tropical depression. No rain here today. Now, here's the radar back to just after 6 o'clock this morning. And you see, here's Broward County right there. Heavy rain in North Broward, and it was persistent there until all that rain kind of got consolidated and moved away. Now, watch back over here. See some showers rotating in. Looks like they'll most likely affect Broward, but any of us could see a shower later on. But in general, the moisture with this thing is going to be on up to the north. It's just not very well organized right now with the dry air being pulled in uh, below it and also this wind flow over top of it that's just going to push most of the bad weather north. And then if it does indeed organize and get stronger up in here, by that time it should be far enough away from us to not have any effect. So we're not ex expecting any significant effect here in South Florida. There you see the tropical depression. There is the tropical storm. There is the hurricane. And over here, that batch of clouds is another disturbance. We'll show you uh, uh, another satellite picture on all of those here in just a moment. But let's check out the tropical depression and what's going to happen with that. Now, it's a low pressure right now, the L meaning tropical depression, but we have a question mark there on tomorrow's map because it could be tropical storm Ophelia by that time. Here on the true view, you see storminess, but it's to the north. Just a few showers here in South Florida with patchy sunshine, and it looks like it'll warm up, up back up uh, to summertime type levels, up near 90 degrees. Then on to Thursday we go, and the system moves north, perhaps as a tropical 
tropical storm and yes there is some chance if it stays far enough offshore over that warm water that it would become Hurricane Ophelia. Summer sunshine on Thursday around here. Most of the storms in the afternoon kind of a typical summer timey day. Quite warm with that wind coming in off the Everglades and then as we get toward the weekend Saturday looks okay but then a tropical wave comes along so we're thinking now more storms on Sunday and exactly how much we just don't know with this tropical wave but it does not look like it would organize. So there's Hurricane Maria. There's Tropical Storm Nate. There's Tropical Depression 16. And over here is a low pressure system in the Gulf. But again, it looks like that would scoot on off to the west, perhaps bothering Texas or Mexico. We do not think that would affect New Orleans. Here's the Tropical Storm Nate, 60 mile an hour tropical storm. It's going to kind of lollygag here near Bermuda for a while and then get swept off to the northeast out into the shipping lanes. That would be it. There's the hurricane, 80 mile an hour Hurricane Maria. That thing is just going to take on off again off to the northeast. Thank you very much. Okay, here's our forecast. Looks like this tonight. Some showers here and there, but mostly okay. And looks like most would be in Broward if we get them. 74 for a low. Tomorrow, a mixture of sun and clouds, just a few showers around, and a high up to about uh, 90. And if we get a lot of sun, it'll even go higher than that. West winds tomorrow, 10 up to 20 knots, well offshore. And there you see a typical summertime -y kind of weather into Saturday. And then we'll be ready for tropical wave, maybe more rain on Sunday. Thank you, Brian. Coming up in sports, the U.S. Open rolls on in New York, and Jim Barry takes a look at the good and the bad from last night's Canes Knowles game. And don't forget, you can still donate to the victims of Hurricane Katrina. Just call our live Neighbors for Neighbors phone bank at 305 597 4404 or toll free at 877 411 4242. And another number to give you if you see news in the making, call our tip line at 866 658 TIPS. CBS 4 News at 6 will be right back. and panties inside a racy romp for Vanity Fair. And are young stars paying the price for getting too much sun? The machine that forces you to face the damage. Is that skin cancer? Next Insider. Tonight at 7.30 on CBS4. Breaking news. Weather. Traffic. Get smart solutions 24-7 on Herald.com. Dan Marino's Fine Food and Spirits is proud to celebrate Dan's induction into the Pro Football Hall of Fame with our new Hall of Fame menu items. Enjoy delicious almond-crusted snapper with wild mushroom risotto. Or try our perfectly aged Sterling Silver Center Cut Filet. Plus, savor our everyday menu featuring our award-winning signature items. And make sure to try our world-famous Marino Margaritas. Dan Marino's Fine Food and Spirits. Sure to score big with your family and friends. Visit Dan Marino's Fine Food and Spirits at any one of our five locations. Congratulations, Dan. Meet Cindy. Cindy wasn't always this good looking. She used the real yellow pages from Bell South to help her out a bit. Well, okay a lot. The redesigned directory has color coded tabs, bolder graphics, and helpful idea guides that made it super easy to find what she needed. So Cindy, thanks for using the real yellow pages. And we sincerely hope you keep doing so. The real yellow pages from Bell South. And search online at realpages.com, another valuable source for real solutions. I'm no decorator, so buying furniture used to be a nightmare. Finding the right pieces, the accessories, getting delivery. That's why I love rooms to go It's one-stop easy shopping. With over 100 different room packages, each one put together to the last detail and priced by the piece and by the room, lower than any place else. It's one simple choice. Delivery in days, not months. Decorating made easy. Rooms to go. What a concept. Decorating's easy at rooms to go. Before Survivor Guatemala begins, they're sent on an 11 mile trek through the jungles of Guatemala. The 16 new castaways will be tested physically. We need some help. And it will wear out the toughest guys. And mentally, like never before. And if you're expecting a big twist, there won't be one. This time, there'll be two. Oh my God! Survivor Guatemala premieres Thursday, September 15th, only on CBS. It's going to be the toughest Survivor we've ever done. A new coach, a new beginning. Dolphins football is on CBS 4. Come on, the Dolphins have it! Be there Sunday at 1 when the Dolphins battle the Broncos. Touchdown Miami! Only on CBS 4, your Dolphin station. Looking at New Orleans' future, how long before the levees are fixed and residents can return? Team coverage continues tonight on the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. Experience you can trust right after CBS 4 News, so stay with us. Even though my team lost last night, Jim Barry can't make fun of me on my first day back. 
Sure we Ooh, can. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, <we laughs> Peggy's back. Yay, the Thank Canes. Ooh. Hey, the Canes should have won, but deserved to lose, quite honestly. They give one away to Florida State, and in this battle, there was plenty to love and hate. Miami. Right pump fake. Now goes long battle. Touchdown. Loved it. Kyle Wright's toughness. The Canes QB rebounds from a slow start to show he's got game. Our question was how is our young quarterback going to be, and uh, I think we have a quarterback. I think he's going to be special. Hated it. Devin Hester's punt returned. Deion Sanders' protege last night was not ready for prime time. Time, strike to Olsen, first down. Loved it. Tight end Greg Olson coming up big in crunch time. Looks like the Canes have another keeper. That last drive, we went, what, 96 yards and however minutes it was, you know, whatever plays. But, I mean, that's that's what we're capable of doing. Hated it. The Canes pass protection. Most of those nine sacks were the O-line's fault. Loved it. Both defenses, they both look NFL ready and keep digging out of holes. Really hated it. The Canes kicking game, a blocked punt, two missed field goals, and a botched snap, which ends up costing UM the game. The reality of it is, is you know, I, I still feel like we're a better team, um, but you know, we just made too many, too many mistakes and you know, we gave them the game. That's how I see it with an assist from Jill Martin. All right, in the NFL, the coroner says Thomas Herrian died of heart disease. The San Francisco 49er had a blocked artery. The Pittsburgh Pirates, meantime, fire manager Lloyd McClendon. Lloyd had reason to blow his stack more than a few times this season. The Bucks share the National League's worst record, 55-81. and 81. At the U.S. Open, Roger Federer just keeps on rolling. He needs four sets, to, though, to beat Nicholas Kiefer today. Meantime, Dominic Urbati's shirt matches his game. They both have holes. Near court against Leighton Hewitt, her body cranks it right into the net. Oops. Hewitt goes on to close him out in style. Here he hits from the far court, a blistering ace. He is on to the men's quarterfinals. Hey, Lance Armstrong might try to sip some more French champagne. The perennial Tour de France champ might unretire. French reports that Armstrong took banned substances to win the first of his seven tours back in 99. Armstrong says he might race again now to quiet what he calls a smear campaign. Hey, this weekend it's time for some dolphin football. Tune in to the season premiere of Crunch Time at 11.30. Then at 1, see the Fen season opener against Denver only on CBS 4, your Dolphin Station. Of course, a full wrap-up on Sports Wrap that night. And the Dolphins will play. Will. <laughs> that's all you can say about win. that. That's a safe bet. Yes. <laughs> all right, Jim, that's our news for now. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at 11 for CBS 4 News tonight. Now it's time for the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. Good night and good to be back with my boys. It's good to have you back. <laughs> The water is finally flowing out of New Orleans, but a new storm is brewing over who's to blame for the disaster. President Bush says he will head up an investigation, while an angry local official accuses government officials of murder. Good evening, I'm Bob Schieffer. Once again, our focus tonight is the devastation on the Gulf Coast, where John Roberts is heading up our coverage. And as water here in New Orleans recedes, fire is a growing problem. Thousands of evacuees are now spread across dozens of states. We'll take a look tonight at the incredible toll this nightmare is taking on children and on the men and women of law enforcement. This is the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. What went wrong and what to do now? At times today, you had to wonder if official Washington and the people in the disaster area were even talking about the same problem. What I intend to do is lead a, uh, to lead a investigation to find out what went right and what went wrong. And I'll tell you why. Uh, it's very important for us to understand the relationship between the federal government, the state government, the local government when it comes to a major catastrophe. In Jefferson Parish, Louisiana, the top po a politician there had a very different take in this interview with Harry Smith. Bureaucracy has murdered people in the greater New Orleans area, and bureaucracy needs to stand trial before Congress today. Back in Washington, the president said there'll be time enough to pass judgment later. 
I, I think one of the things that people want us to do here is to play a blame game. I, if, if, we got to solve problems. We're problem solvers. There'll be ample time for people to figure out what went right and what went wrong. No, said Aaron Broussard, Washington still doesn't hear us. Head should roll and roll now. Take whatever idiot they have at the top of whatever agency. Give me a better idiot. You know, give me a caring idiot. Give me a sensitive idiot. Just, just don't give me the same idiot. And on it went through the day as the crisis remained dire. Once again, we have deployed a team of CBS News correspondents, producers, and camera crews at key locations. We begin again tonight in New Orleans with John Roberts. John. And Bob, every day there are new problems and new challenges here. With most of the people evacuated now, the next big problem is getting rid of all this water. That process is underway now, but it is something like emptying an ocean through a straw. It is going to take weeks, but they have started. It was a sight people in this city have waited eight days to see. Water finally flowing out of New Orleans and back into the lake that drowned it. I'm starting to think about the possibilities now versus being immersed in death and misery and emergencies and crisis. So it's looking better. Better, but not out of the woods yet. More fires broke out again today. This one threatening to swallow up an entire city block. There's no water in the hydrant, so helicopters attack them like forest fires, filling up in the Mississippi, dropping load after load on the flames. And the flooding here is no help. There's oil and gas in the water. Officials fear an explosion. Rescuers today stepped up their efforts to coax hundreds of people still living in the flood to come into higher ground. We're an Air Force rescue team. We will assist you. The USS Iwo Jima, now docked in New Orleans, is flying dozens of search and rescue missions daily. But the admiral in charge says it's a challenge. I think a lot of these people, as you know, um, are convinced that the water's going to subside and we're going to get back to normalcy. And having flown around here, it's not going to happen. Three days ago, we met Deirdre Humphrey, chest deep in the stinking brew. She was determined to tough it out. Today, we found her at an evacuation point near the convention center. Why did you decide to come out? I couldn't, uh, it, it wasn't going anywhere soon. We couldn't, we just couldn't live like that anymore. Eight days. We tried to tough it out. That's it. She had flagged down rescuers, and within hours, she and her family were checked through security and on a bus to the airport. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. What she'll come back to, though, is an open question. Cleanup here will be an astronomical task. The Superdome is completely trashed inside and out. And with so many bodies still out there in the flood, potentially thousands, city officials are bracing for another catastrophe when the water goes down. I think this nation is going to be shocked one more time when we start pulling all these bodies out of these homes. And late this afternoon, one small piece of good news, part of the city got a bit of running water. In a major disaster, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, is supposed to move quickly to coordinate aid for victims. But countless survivors of Hurricane Katrina, that never happened. So private citizens have taken up the slack as best they can. Cynthia Bowers is on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. From Camp Katrina, where entire families are living in tents pitched in a sweltering parking lot, to feeding stations like this one, the cries and complaints all sound the same. FEMA, we need FEMA. There is no FEMA set up anywhere. It took eight days for FEMA to open its first Mississippi-based disaster response center here in Ocean Beach. The man in charge admits the disaster was overwhelming. There seems to be the perception on the part of the people here from New Orleans all the way to Biloxi that FEMA bungled this big time. What's your response? This was just such a, a huge, huge uh, event. Just New Orleans alone would have been probably at our peak. As he was picking through the rubble of what used to be his Biloxi business, Vietnam vet Hayes Bolton told us he gave up on FEMA days ago. I don't see any government organization doing the things that I've always heard about, nor what I expected. Thank you so much. But what no one expected was how quickly and completely everyday people would fill the gap. Big church groups are cooking up three meals a day for thousands of hungry souls. There you go, buddy boy. All across the Gulf Coast, good Samaritans are on the ground getting to places the government has yet to find. What will we do when the private donations run out? I guess we'll die of starvation. Birmingham pastor Herman Henderson says he won't let that happen. 
For days now, he's been running his own modest relief stand set up on the very spot he ran out of gas coming down to help. So somehow you're able to get done in a matter of days what the federal government hasn't done in a week. Get away from the politics. There's $80 billion been already appropriated to help these people, but the money is not getting these people. And it could be a while before it does. FEMA told us today it is nowhere near ready to start handing out checks. In fact, it can't even get its disaster center up and running in this hard hit city until sometime next week. Cynthia Bowers, CBS News, Biloxi, Mississippi. The president and Congress are now talking about a $40 billion aid package for this area. But the money won't cover up the huge political battle way underway over who is at fault here. Gloria Borger is tracking that tonight. As residents of the Gulf Coast struggled to restart their lives, official Washington began its angry and accusatory finger pointing. We're, in God's name, we're the people who are supposed to give water, support, People were dying there. What in heaven's name was happening? If somebody said, oh, you pick somebody to, uh, to hammer, I don't know who I'd pick. The president said he's going to lead the investigation into what went wrong. He need to look only in the mirror. Bureaucracy is not going to stand in the way of getting a job done for the people. But in fact, bureaucracy may have been responsible for a devastating delay in the rescue effort. CBS's David Martin reports that while Coast Guard helicopters had been pre-positioned and were making rescues two hours after the hurricane, the military response was much slower. We weren't able to go uh, for 34 hours. Could have been, you know, saving bodies, so rescuing people. One Air Force Reserve colonel says his unit was crippled by red tape. We could have been airborne in six hours and over overhead plucking out people between. All the agencies that have a part in the, in the approval process, uh, it took 34 hours to get three of my helicopters airborne. Congress wants answers, and today opened its Good own morning. investigation. If our system did such a poor job when there was no enemy, how would the federal, state, and local governments have coped with a terrorist attack? But for the survivors of Hurricane Katrina, it's a much simpler question. My big question to anybody who's trying to shift the blame is where were you? Where in the hell were you? And that's the question everyone here wants answered, Bob. And while they're at it, they know they're going to have to find ways to come up with a relief package of at least $150 billion, Bob. Let me ask you this, Gloria. I mean, it seems to me there was a failure at every level of government, and it was the Congress and the President who put together this enormous Department of Homeland Security. Is there any talk now of maybe that was a bad idea, maybe we need to break it up and go back to the way we used to do it? Oh, there sure is, Bob. While they know they only have themselves to blame, Senator Hillary Clinton today proposed taking FEMA out of the Department of Homeland Security and making the person who heads that a cabinet-level position so that person will have some authority to get things done. Well, that seems to be where most of the criticism is focusing. Do you think there could be some changes uh, in the personnel in FEMA? Well, I think FEMA Director Michael Brown has a big target on his back, Bob. There are lots of Democrats today calling for his removal, and I think you're going to hear a lot more of that. Republicans were kind of holding back a little, but they're not too fond of him either these days. Let's go back to John Roberts. Uh, John, I want to ask you, uh, <laughs> you've been there the whole time. Is there anything now that is actually beginning to work right? Well, Bob, there's a lot of things that are working right in terms of the relief effort. The problem is that it, it all got here too late. For example, when the National Guard set up a feeding station outside the convention center, the next day people were gone. They'd been starving for four days. The uh, USS uh, Iwo Jima is here now and uh, with its big hospital, and, but it's empty because there's nobody left to treat. They're still now just trying to get all of those people out of the floodwaters. But, Bob, it's, it's kind of like they, they, they took a cannon here and are firing it down the street and there's nothing to hit. Okay. Well, thanks to both of you. As hard as it has been for adults forced to evacuate New Orleans, for children, the sudden loss of the place they called home has been especially wretching. Byron Pitts now with that story. Today, across the country... We're going to get your ID picture made. ...comfort in a classroom. We want to welcome Bailey and we want to welcome Aaron. That's what schools provided, a slither of sanity for those new students. My name's Tyler Riche. I'm from New Orleans, and I'm 
11. Those wounded souls. I'm afraid they can't find my grandmother. From New Orleans. Okay, my name is Tyrone Smith and I am 13 years old. And I have lost my house, my dogs. It's just been horrible. Horrible for seven days and seven nights. We are gonna die out here if they do not see somebody out here right now. 135,000 children from New Orleans displaced by Hurricane Katrina. They're not staying here. Many may have died. Somebody push her in the water. Many more witness death. Hey, sweetie, how you holding up? And then there are children like these two sisters, 12 and 7. They have no idea if their parents are dead or alive. I miss my mama and my daddy, though. You miss your mom and your dad. Terrible as it's been, therapists fear the worst may not be over for the young. Adults typically express their feelings. Children suppress them. And quite frankly, right now, there's not much in New Orleans to help them. <laughs> Carol Madura is FEMA's chief clinical social worker. We give them clean clothes. We take them to the bathroom. We feed them. We try to do You parent them, it sounds like. Absolutely parent them. We had a family of three boys who were alone in a house, water up to the attic, and we don't know where their parents are. That's why it's so important to get these children back in school, back to a world that seems normal. A world beyond the one left behind. Byron Pitts, CBS News, New Orleans. And coming up next, no one has been under greater stress in New Orleans than police and firefighters. How they have and have not handled it is tonight's inside story. But first. CBS News honors fallen heroes. Jeremy Hines. Army buddies called him Ketchum. Always smiling, you used to joke, it's hell to be gorgeous. But I've learned to live with it. He loved driving, especially the back streets of New Orleans. His dream was to open a bar there. He adored his wife, also a soldier, and they celebrated their first anniversary in Iraq. Eight weeks later, Hines was killed by enemy fire. There will be some discomfort, but it won't hurt a bit. Now with new Olay Regenerist Night, you can rest easy. It works during the night to increase surface cell renewal by 50% for an Olay mini lift every morning. This is it, my time to shine. Get better all the time. This is everything I wanted. Everything. This is it, this is just for me. It targets only the gray hair. Replace it with subtle tones for a natural look in five easy minutes. This is everything I wanted. This is just for me. Work on that left hand. Thanks for the jest, Mom. Simple, everyday moments can be the perfect time to talk to your kids about not smoking. <laughs> So you don't have to plan a big discussion. Look, there's a dragonfly in one of your leg? A little moment will do just fine. Talk to your kids about not smoking. Smoking cigarettes can hurt your game too. They'll listen. Don't worry, Dad. I won't. For conversation starters, log on to philipmorrisusa.com. Big news for dry, irritated eyes. Introducing new clear eyes for dry eyes. Your dry eyes get moisture that stays in for lasting relief. Wow. New clear eyes for dry eyes. Looking for a fresh solution in bladder protection? Then take a look at our new improved serenity pads from Tenna with Odisor Plus to help prevent odors and a unique soft top sheet with multi inlets that absorb liquid faster than ever before. feels dry. You feel fresh. Mom doesn't do it like that. That's not the way Mom does it. Hey, you guys getting hungry? Hungry for something good? Healthy choice is great tasting food you can feel good about. You did one thing right, Dad. Healthy choice. Green is good. 
With the military now in New Orleans and volunteer emergency workers arriving from around the country, the city's own police force is finally getting a chance to catch its breath. It is a force under enormous stress. Lee Cowan now with the Inside Story. There are few people more angry or more disappointed over the lack of help from the outside than those who had to shoulder that burden all alone. There's no police department in the history of the world has ever gone through anything like this, but guess what? We still stand and we will be here. But barely. As many as 200 New Orleans police officers have walked off the job, mostly the younger ones, we're told. But there are hundreds of others who are simply missing, some of them stranded, some of them dead, perhaps. No one really knows. Others have respectfully turned in their badges to deal with personal issues. No wonder. 80% of this force lost their homes to the storm, or worse. There are a lot of officers who have no idea where their kids are. They don't know where their wives are, their spouses are. We got men who've lost their families that's out there putting criminals in jail. We're getting in shootouts every night. They're shooting at our police cars. They tried to take me hostage. The stress is taking its toll. Two of his officers have already committed suicide, a breaking blow that brought the chief to his knees. Anytime you lose a guy who wears a blue shirt, it's hard, you know, especially to that. Who, who is this? It's hardly better for the city's firefighters. My house was two blocks from the break, so. Still, they're struggling to keep the city from burning to the ground without any water, without any electricity, or reliable communications. I'm like, no. Officer Chuck Little took just an hour off duty to check on his home. This is what he found. What do you do? How do you fix a house like this? He didn't even have time to answer his own question. Five minutes later, he was back on the job. Lee Cowan, CBS News, New Orleans. In Washington, the Chief Justice William Rehnquist returned to the Supreme Court for the last time today as poll bearers included federal judge John Roberts, once a law clerk for Rehnquist, and now the nominee to replace him as Chief Justice. Current members of the court waited, some with tears, at the top of the steps. The casket was carried into the court's great hall, where the public can pay respects before tomorrow's funeral. And the confirmation hearings for Judge Roberts, which were to begin today, have now been rescheduled. They'll begin next Monday. Just ahead tonight, uprooted and on the move, we'll look at why so many evacuees are feeling like strangers in a strange land. It's frustrating. Just when you're ready to relax, that's when it happens. The urge to move, along with uncomfortable sensations in your legs. They're hard to describe, but they can even keep you from getting to sleep. You feel the urgent need to get up and move just to get some relief. There's a name for it, restless leg syndrome. And if you have it, you're among the nearly one in 10 U.S. adults who do. Want to know more? Visit restlesslegs.com or talk to your doctor. Okay. Oh, Chubsy, come on. The answer's always... No! That's right. Ow. No! I'm not hearing it. No! 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 Go from no to no hassle with Capital One No Hassle Rewards. There are no blackout dates on any airline, anytime. I should've worked at Capital One! What's in your wallet? No! Sifting through all that clutter got you frustrated? Need an outlet? How about two? Introducing the newest Glade scented oil. It's the only scented oil that comes with a nightlight and not one, but two extra outlets. Cut through the clutter with Glade scented oil. Mom, I'm home. I noticed. Two S.C. Johnson, a family company. I love being the age I am. I just don't want to look it. And as it turns out, I don't have to. Introducing Advanced Radiance, a new age-defying makeup from CoverGirl with Olay age-defying ingredients built right in. It reduces the appearance of wrinkles and fine lines and helps reveal younger-looking skin in three weeks. Who says you can't look as young as you feel? Advanced Radiance, new from Easy Breezy Beautiful CoverGirl. One in four of us over 55 has difficulty hearing here. Come in during Beltone's Better Hearing Days for a free lifestyle hearing consultation.
with 65 years of hearing care experience and the latest in digital technology. Belltone can help. So call or come in now with Belltone's better hearing days. Hearing again never looked or sounded so good. In the week since the hurricane struck, gasoline prices have been rising nearly seven cents a day. The Energy Department reported today that the nationwide average price for self-serve regular is now $3.07 a gallon. That's up nearly a dollar just since Memorial Day. The hurricane disaster has resulted in mass relocations of Americans from three Gulf Coast states, the largest migration in decades. 21 states, Texas in particular, are already housing evacuees, and nine more say they are prepared to take in the homeless. It's all taking a toll state by state and family by family. With that story, Mark Strassman. We're going this way. We're going this way, please. This is the Alonzo family, modern-day nomads. To start over, they will go west to Los Angeles and plan never to live in New Orleans again. Uh, I'm not going back to New Orleans. I don't want to go back to New Orleans. Their old neighborhood, the only home they've ever known, was destroyed by flooding. They now join one of America's greatest population shifts since the Great Depression. We don't have no choice right now but to take a chance. We don't have anything else, nothing to go back to. Ticket, please. Ticket out envelope, please. At this bus depot in Baton Rouge, evacuees fill every outbound seat. 3,000 people a day heading to Texas, Florida, anywhere. And you figure you'll be there how long? Months, years, and probably. Don't know. And an hour outside Salt Lake City, 600 evacuees wonder how long they'll stay in Utah. They're living in military barracks and surprised to be here at all. Echo, 61 souls on board. They were put on planes in New Orleans and only told in flight where they were heading next. Wow, Utah, you know, unimaginable because we was all looking forward to going to different places that was closer. Very early this morning, the Alonzos arrived in Los Angeles, weary but welcome. L.A. Dream Center, a California charity, paid for their plane tickets and gave them an apartment. Welcome home. But the Hollywood ending for this family drama is still a script in progress. We appreciate the help and we're willing to give it a shot. People are giving us a shot here. We're willing to give it a shot to stay here if we can get on the right track. Every day here to keep things in motion, keep things moving forward, more relief workers come in and more evacuees move out. All part of this mass migration. Tens of thousands of people moving forward any way and anywhere they can. Bob? Thank you very much, Mark. Even as the country is dealing with the Katrina disaster, the busiest part of the hurricane season may be just starting. There are three storms now in the Atlantic. Ophelia, a tropical depression, is expected to be a tropical storm when it reaches Florida tomorrow with heavy rain. And we'll have more CBS News after these messages. Measles is a game you play and then you sing a song. Mumps are something that camels have. Some have two mumps and some have one. Chicken Park is a park where chickens have fun. Most kids today don't have a clue about diseases adults remember, thanks to Merck scientists. We've invested billions to research heart disease and asthma. Now we're trying to make Alzheimer's, diabetes, and cancer history, too. Merck, where patients come first. How Hank tricked the hound by Shaw. Hank chose Shaw unscented. Stanley applied a macho smell. There they go. Oh, Rex has picked up a scent, but only Stanley's, because Hank seems undetectable. Good plan, Hank. Odor-free, Shaw unscented. Protection that's undetected. We started with what you love. Heart-healthy, whole-grain bran flakes. Plump, juicy raisins. Then we made a few changes. Introducing new post-raisin brand cereal bars. Great taste, heart health. That fits in your pocket. You gelling? No telling how much I'm gelling. You gelling? You know I'm gelling. Hey, Ellen, you gelling? I'm gelling. You want some melon? Nah, but hey, I'm like much gelling. I'm so gelling. Nice. Are you gelling yet? Dr. Scholl's massaging gel insoles are made from the softest gel ever created. If you and your shoes don't feel outrageously comfortable, you get your money back, guaranteed. I'm gelling. You're not gelling. You're so not gelling. Are you gelling? Dr. Scholl's. I am dedicated. 
I am disciplined. I am determined. And I'm a diabetic. And that's how I feel when I test with my meter, the AccuCheck Aviva. The new AccuCheck Aviva system, designed to fill correctly and test right the first time, to make every strip count. The AccuCheck Aviva. Switch to the system that makes every strip count. It's the all-new mid-size sedan with a luxurious full-size cabin, protected by six airbags, standard. More interior space than Camry or Accord. The all-new 2006 Sonata, a Hyundai like you've never seen before. Why did it take so long to rescue tens of thousands? Who's responsible? The journey through hell and high water. 48 Hours Investigates, tonight. We end tonight with the passing of a man familiar to generations of TV viewers. His name was Bob Denver. Some of you will remember him as Maynard G. Krebs, the beatnik allergic to work on the early 60s sitcom The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis. But for many more of you, Denver was and will always be Gilligan. Morning, Gilligan. Can I help, sir? Sure you can. What do you want me to do? I know. Sit down and shut up. Word came today that Bob Denver died of complications from cancer at the age of 70. Gilligan lives on in reruns. And that's the news coming up on CBS, a special edition tonight of 48 Hours Investigates Disaster in the Delta. Tonight at 8, 7 Central, I'm Bob Schieffer. Good night. Disney on